Many people who have walked with God, they call him, O oh Lord, my God. Amen. When Jesus was on the cross of Calvary, he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He called on a God who was personal, who was close. That was his God. And today I want us to ask this question. Because many people perhaps we have not carefully considered or thought of which God is he that you call yours. Mm. Who is this Lord? Do you have the correct God mm. in you? Because there are many gods in the world. And a time like this it is, it is a time to recheck your faith and to investigate your heart so that you can see for sure the God in whom you believe in. Amen. Which God is He? Do you really understand the God that you have been worshipping? The God that you have put your faith in? The God that you believe in? The God that you have walked with? Have you known that God? To the extent that you can entitle him with the word, my, my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We know that in the world, people have had different gods. And even in the church, some people have had the Lord, our God. The God of our church. But a time when the church now has gone to be a personal relationship with God, do you still hold on to the God that you knew or you only knew the God of your pastor, the God of your church, the God of your community, the God of your fathers? Do you have a personal God in your life? You know, one day I was discussing with a certain lady when we were in the nursing school during break time and I was trying to share with her the gospel of Christ and I was telling her about God and she told me that she does not know her stand. She believes in a God somewhere that she cannot pinpoint. She said, according to her, a God can be anything that you choose to worship. If you choose to worship a shoe or a particular object in your house, then that can become your God. Also, she said that, or if you choose maybe a certain stone behind your house, that stone can become your God, and there you can go every day, to worship and to pray. Now I told her, I asked her one question. Suppose you are going on a journey and you have to carry your God. Are you able to carry all your gods with you? Or suppose you forget your God at home and disaster comes upon you in a particular place where you needed a God that was present. What would you do? Then I told her of this flight that we remember, the Lufthansa flight from Germany. The flight that dropped off in the Alps mountains. According to the flight recorder, they said the last words that many people spoke of at that time of impact when the plane was going down was that everybody was saying, Oh Lord, my God. Oh my God, O oh with O, oh, not O oh with OH. Everybody realized that at such a time like that, you are going to meet a personal God and you are going to appear before a real God. This is why I want to urge most of us to question ourselves deeper during this time when we are at home. Do you really know whom you believe in? Are you persuaded? That the God that you chose will stand with you and is the right God. Hallelujah. Amen. I was surprised that a nurse who had seen the wonders of God in the classes that we were going through, who had seen the uniqueness 
of the bones and the ligaments marching on and intertwined in the human body still could not understand that there was a God who was behind all this. And it appeared to me that you yourself have to find revelation on who you believe in. Therefore, I want to challenge us today. Have you chosen the right God? I want to try to explain some things which some of you may know, but some people in the whole world may have forgotten these things. You know, there are some gods who have disappointed people in the past. And I want to talk about these gods who have disappointed people in the past that you should not choose or you should not think or even think about. There was a certain man who was called Laban. And Laban had kept his gods at his house. We know this story of Laban and Jacob and Leah and Rachel. I will not repeat that story. But we know that a time reached when Jacob was tired and Jacob decided to go back to his father's home. And he carried his wives, his many animals, and his goods and decided to go. However, there was a certain lady whose name was called Rachel, Jacob's younger wife. And Rachel decided in her heart that because she did not have any God, she had not known of any God as she was leaving her father's house. She felt insecure to leave those gods behind. And Rachel decided to steal her father's gods. Now I want to warn you about gods that can be stolen. Amen? Amen. Now, she carried away the gods of her fathers. Please, my brothers and sisters out there, be careful not to choose gods which can be stolen, gods which can be carried away. Because you might be perplexed like Laban was when he realized that his gods had been stolen. Hallelujah. Amen. Gods which can be stolen, they can let you down. They can leave you in confusion and in fear like Laban was left in confusion and fear. And Laban decided to chase after Jacob to go and find out where his gods have gone. The second thing I want to warn you, those people who have not chosen their God, that there are gods who are asleep also. Hallelujah. Amen. On mountain of Carmel, Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal. And Baal was a god to them. And the prophets who were worshipping this Baal, they did not know that Baal was a sleeping god. And Elijah told them, we are going to demonstrate today who the real God is. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I want you to call upon your God so that your God can come and consume your sacrifice. And if a God will come and consume the sacrifice, then that God will be God. Hallelujah. Amen. But the people of Baal, the people who are worshipping, the followers of Baal, did not know that they were following a sleeping God. And the Bible says that from morning they began to pray, they began to shout in the name of Baal. They began to turn round, going round and round the sacrifices and saying, Oh Baal, hear us. They were saying, Oh Baal, hearken to our voice. Come and consume the sacrifice that we have served before you, O Baal. They cut themselves with stones and knives and blood was coming out of them. They went round from morning until noon. But the people who chose Baal, they did not know one thing, that Baal was a sleeping God. Today I want to tell you, do not choose gods who sleep. Hallelujah. Amen. Because a time will come when you need help. A time will come when your life is in danger. Like the lives of the people who are worshipping Baal. Their lives were in danger. But they did not know that they had made a wrong choice. They chose a God who was asleep. And the Bible says in Psalms 124 verse 4, that he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber or sleep. That is the living God. I want to challenge you today. Choose a God who is alive. Choose a God who is, who is awake all the time, like the God of Israel, the one who never slumbers nor sleeps. Amen. Also choose a God whom when you call shall answer you. You see, the prophets of Baal, they were calling Baal and saying, Oh Baal, hear us. Hear us as they went round us, as they cut themselves in by stone and with the knives. But Baal could not hear them 
because Baal was asleep. But the Bible says in Jeremiah 33, 3, that call unto me and I will answer you. Amen. Call unto me and I will answer you. Amen. Our God is a God who answers. He is not a God who is asleep like Baal. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why he called, Elijah called on him and he was able to answer Elijah. And he came and consumed the sacrifice. Glory to God. Amen. The third God that I want to talk about are gods which are made by hands. The gods that are made of silver, of gold, of bronze, of wood, and of stone. The Bible says these gods, they will not save you. The Bible says these gods, they cannot see, they cannot hear, and they cannot smell. And they cannot rescue you because they are worthless. Oh, they are of no value. These gods, the Bible says that after you have made them, you have molded them with your own hands, and now you bow down to worship them. They have no breath in them. They cannot save you. This is why such gods nowadays cannot save man. This is why all these gods, God shut them down. And now we see that every place has been locked down. Because these are things which were made by the hands of man. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who trusted in gods that are made of silver. Gods that are made of gold. Gods that are made of wood or bronze. I tell you even today, when this coronavirus has come, there are people who trusted in gods made of silver. And despite the fat bank accounts, the gold is asleep in the bank. The gold is asleep in the bank. The gold cannot hear you. The silver cannot hear you. Your money cannot hear you. Only the living God. God can hear you and can rescue you. So I want to tell you, if you chose those gods over the living God, you made a big mistake. Now it is a time to reconsider because it is a time when gods which are made of hearts cannot rescue any man. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says such images, they are false. They have no breath in them. They cannot give you life. They are false. They cheated you that you are secure. They cheated you that you are safe. But now it is a time to know that you are not safe in the hands of gods that are made with hands. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that we shall not worship gods which are made by hands. There is only one true God, the living God, whose name is Yahweh. And the Bible says in the book of Exodus that you should not bow down to worship other gods. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, he is a jealous God. Oh, the jealous God will stand up one day like he has stood today. The jealous God whose name is Yahweh, he can stand and crush those other gods to powder. He can destroy the systems of man. He can destroy the plans of man. He can destroy the kingdoms of men. He can destroy powers and principalities. He can bring down presidents. He can bring down nations. He can bring down greatness. He can tell you that everything that has been made with hands is nothing. Only a God who created him, himself is the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Woe to him who says to a wooden thing, Awake! Who says to a silent stone, Arise! I know that as many, many of you who are listening right now, our friends in India, or our friends in other places, those people who have many gods that are made of, of, of wood, made of stone, made of silver, made of, of, of bronze, these gods will not rescue you. Only the living God will rescue you. You will call on these gods, they will be asleep. You will call on these gods, they will be away. They will not answer you because in them there is no breath. In them there is no life. Therefore they, come, they have nothing to give back to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Another thing I want to tell you, there are gods which fall down. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5 verse 3, in the land of Ashdod, they knew that a god, some gods are gods who fail people. They are gods who can fall down. The people of Philistine, after they had stolen the Ark of the Covenant, oh, they brought it into the house of their God. The God was called Dagon. And in the next morning when they came, they found their God had disappointed them. Their God had fallen down. And his head was cut out. Oh, Baal, uh, Dagon was on his face. Dagon had fallen down on his face. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says they fixed him up and put him again. To stand. Oh. But the next morning when they came, they found him on down on his face, his neck cut, his hands broken to pieces because he was not a real God. Amen. Gods which can be fixed, they are not real gods. <laughs> gods which can be put to stand when they fall down, they are not real gods. Amen. There are some gods that you need to check. 
If you find a God that can fall down, that is a God that will let you down. And at such a time Amen. like this, you don't need a God that falls down. You need a God that will stand strong like the God of Israel. Amen. And when the children of Ashdod, when the people of Ashdod saw this, they found out that Baal, oh, this Dagon, this Dagon had cheated them. This Dagon had disappointed them. And they decided to make a choice. I want to tell you, even us today, we have to make a choice. The other choice is that to remain with the ark of the living God or to keep their God who falls down. Because the, the two cannot go together. Dagon and the ark of the, of the living God could not exist in one house. One person must fall down. And that person, his name is Dagon. So I want to tell you today, you who is still fumbling between two decisions, you who still does not know which God to choose, I want to alert you. If you see any God who can fall down, that God, don't put your trust in that God. That God will disappoint you. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, the Bible says, I set before you today life or death, Blessing or curse, death and destruction, or life and prosperity. Every one of us today, God has given us a choice. God has given you time to select the correct God. God has given you time to choose the right God for yourself. I would not like to have a God who is asleep at such a time like this. I would not like to have a God who would not answer me at such a time like this. I would not want to have a God who falls down at such a time as this. Even the economies, they are falling down because they were only dug on. Hallelujah. Amen. The world systems, they have crumbled down because there have only been but dagons. They have not been the real deal. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it, the, the God told Joshua that I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will not abandon you. That is the God that you should choose, the God of Joshua. He told Jacob, Behold, I'm with you. I will keep you wherever you go. You need a God who will go with you everywhere you are. Mm, he told these people, when Christ came and lived in them, Jesus said in the book of Romans chapter 8, the Bible says that Christ liveth in you. You need a God who lives in you, not a God who can remain behind in your house when you are outside there. You need a God who abides in your heart, a God who will be with you wherever you are. Hallelujah. Amen. You know at such a time like this, many difficult things are going on. There are many problems going on. It is so sad to listen. Even the news when they're saying that people are dying alone with no loved ones around them. You need a God who can be with you at such a time like that. Amen. You don't need a God who can abandon you when you are alone and there is no ventilator to breathe through. You need a God who will stand with you. So I want to tell you right now, you need to take this message seriously. Choose the God who will not fail you. Choose the God who when you call on, he will surely come. Amen. The Bible Amen. says that I beseech you. Daniel said, I beseech you, carefully choose the God whom you will follow. And know the God that you serve. Daniel knew the God that he was serving. And he said in Daniel 11, that the people who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. The people who do know their God, you have to go back to yourself. You have to go back and begin to investigate this God that I've known. Who is he? What are the capabilities of this God that I know? What are the limitations of this God that I have? Where have I put my faith in? Because the foundations will be shaken like the foundations have been shaken today. Paul knew his God. He said, my God shall supply all your needs. He knew Jehovah Jireh. He knew a God who supplies. David called him, my God, my Lord, my God, many times. Because he brought victory to him. Mm. And David knew him personally. Because many times when he was threatened by death, when Saul sent men after his life, and there was no place to hide, oh, he called on the Lord his God. And the Lord his God broke forth for him. 
Amen. This is a time when he was surrounded by the Philistines and there was no way for him to escape. But he called on the Lord, his God. And the Bible says that the Lord God broke forth. The Lord God burst through like a Amen. mighty rushing wind. Jehovah God came and he called that place Jehovah Balperazim. Today in the world, we need such a God like the God of David. The Lord who will give us a breakthrough in this time, O King of Glory. Amen. The Lord will burst through our enemy like a mighty rushing flood, like a mighty river. The Lord will burst forth and bring breakthrough. That Amen. is the God that David knew. Amen. Daniel also knew his God very well. That is why when his life was in danger, when Nebuchadnezzar had forgotten his dream, and Nebuchadnezzar said that all the wise men must give him, must tell him his dream and the interpretation thereof. If not, then people will be cut into pieces. But because Daniel had established a concrete relationship with his God, because Daniel had known his God, he knew that his God was a God who revealed secrets. Mm. So therefore he was not troubled, he was not worried, he was not, he was not restless. Because he had known that if he called on his God, his God was going to answer. He knew that if there was any secret in this world, his God was going to reveal. We need the God of Daniel who can reveal secrets. We need Amen. the God of Daniel who can answer when we call. And therefore Daniel, he went to sleep because he knew that his God was going to give him victory. It did not bother him. He was not afraid. He was not afraid when he was thrown into the lion's den. Because he knew that the God that he had trusted him was able to deliver him from the lion's den. Amen. The God that he had known was the God who created those lions. Hallelujah. Amen. What if Daniel's God was created by, by, by hands? What Amen. if Daniel's God was created by silver or gold? Oh, when Daniel could have cried in the lion's den, there would be nobody to hear him. Mm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew too well their God. That is why they were not afraid to go into the fiery furnace. Because they understood the God whom they served. They knew that their God was well able to deliver them. Amen. They knew that their God had power and authority over any fire lit by human hands. That is why they did not become afraid. Because they understood who their God was. Amen. So I want us today to consider, do we really know our God? Is our God a God who can answer? Is our God a God who will hear us? Or is, have you chosen a God who is sleeping? Have you chosen a God that is made with mere hands? I tell you whether it is a billion euros, whether it's a billion dollars, oh, those have been made by the hands of men. They cannot save you. Only the living God can save you. That is why the famous hymn was saying that, I know whom I have believed in, and I'm persuaded that is able. Do you know whom? you have believed in. If you have forgotten whom you chose, if you forgot the God that you chose, it is time to go back to your roots and start to investigate the God that you chose. Who is he? The God that you believed in. Who is he? Begin to talk to your God again. If you have forgotten certain, certain things, if you don't remember, ask God to bring to remembrance who he is to you. It is a time to reflect. I thank the Lord for this time that he has given us because it is a time when we can personally, personally make a choice on the God whom we want to serve, on Amen. the God whom we want to put above us, on the God whom we want to pursue, on the God whom we want to live for. We cannot live for gods that are sleeping. We cannot live for gods who crumble and fall. We cannot live for gods which have been constituted and made by men. Because you have seen that all those gods, they are nothing. Only the Lord, he is God. Only the Lord, he is God. Amen. He's the one who can save you. Hallelujah. I want to ask you today, my sister and my brother, even as I close this subject today, that who is your God? Did you make the right choice? If you did not make the right choice, it is time for you now to reflect Carefully look in your heart and begin to see, begin to investigate. If the Lord or the God that you chose is not the one that you want, is the one that will let you down, is the one who will be asleep when you are calling and would not answer back, then you made a wrong choice. 
Because Jehovah God said that when you call on me, I will answer you. I will answer you. He is the one who can answer you. Jesus, he is that God. You can make a choice today and come to Jesus. The Bible says that come unto me all you who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Maybe you have carried these gods over you. You have relied on these gods, but they have let you down. You put your hope on these gods, but now they have failed you. Now you have a time when you can choose the living God. He's the one who will stick closer to you. The Bible says that he will be closer than a brother. He's the one who says that he will never forsake you, nor leave you. He says that he will be with you until the end of time. Amen. That he will hold your hand so that where you are, where he is, you can be. He's the living God. I want us to stand together so that we can pray. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. It's a decision that you have to make. Whether you make it today or someday, but you will remember this message, that a time will come when you have to choose which God to be with, which God to serve, and which God to believe in. Hallelujah. the Lord as we pray together. Thank you, Lord. And I want you just to declare today the God that you have chosen and say, this is my path. Thank you, I have decided to choose this God because of A, B, C, D. Because other gods, they will fail you. Other gods, they have failed you. Only the living God is the one who never fails. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Father, we worship you, King of Lord. Lord, today, my God, we desire, my Father, in our hearts, O God, that you, O oh Father, become our God, O King of Lord. Father, we give you the seat of our hearts, O God, that you come and sit on the seat of the King of Kings, O Lord. Father, you are the God who will never disappoint us, O God. You are the God who will answer us when we call. Father, you are the God who will never sleep or slumber, O God. You are the God who will never fall down, O Father. You are the God who will never be brought low, O God. Because you are seated forever, King of King of Lord. You rule over all, O Father. You reign from everlasting to everlasting, O God. Father, there is no measure of your understanding, O King of Lord. You are the creator of yourself, O God of God. Father, we love you to be our God, O Father. We have chosen you to be our God. We have chosen you to reign over us, O God. We have chosen you to rule over us, O God of Daniel. We have chosen you to reign over us, O God of David, O Father. You are the God who will break forth for us, O Father. You are the God who will give us a breakthrough, O Father. You are the God who will open the doors, O King of Glory. You are the God of Silas and Paul and Silas, O Father, who was able to open the prison gates, O Father. You are the God who we desire today, O God. You are the one whom we have chosen, O Father. Receive all the glory and all the honor, O Father. I pray, Lord, for those who have been undecided, O God, that today they will make that decision, O God, to choose you, the only one and true God, O Father, and Christ, O God, whom we have revealed, O Father. I pray that many shall follow you, King of Glory, that their eyes shall be opened, O God, to see the real God, O Father, to know the only true God, to know Jehovah God, O Father, the great I am, O Father.